should increase our focus on direct investment, both on the local private sector, regional, and as well as international. Hello and welcome to the Bankers Masterclass series on Egypt's reform agenda in association with Arab African International Bank. I'm James King, the Africa and Middle East editor at The Banker, and with me is Hassan Abdullah, chief executive of Arab African International Bank. In this first chapter, we will be discussing the impacts of the government's economic reform program. Hi, James. Hassan. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've seen the Egyptian government push through some sweeping uh, economic reforms, uh, changes to the subsidy regime, changes to the tax regime, adjustments to government spending. Uh, to what extent are we seeing the impact of these changes play out uh, in the Egyptian economy today? Well, just yesterday, James, uh, we got a, a new batch of figures, and they show uh, extreme improvement on the macro level. Uh, the reforms, as you have mentioned, have been comprehensive. They have been structural. They have been addressing uh, monetary uh, legislation, uh, fiscal. And uh, I'm quite confident that there is going to be results even better, starting from what we are today. And uh, uh, to give you just an idea about some numbers, we, are, we have broken several uh, uh, thresholds, like first time in seven, eight years, our GDP crosses 5.3. First time in 15 years, uh, fiscal has a surplus, uh, and uh, uh, the reserves are at record high. So the macroeconomic picture looks quite promising. Now, one of the biggest sort of uh, keynote reforms occurred in November 2016 when uh, the central bank floated the pound, and that's had a huge sort of influence on, on the way that the economy has, has shaped up since then. So from this sort of, we're almost two years on from that event, what does it look like on the ground? What kind of impact has it really had on, on the way that the private sector can function in Egypt? You see, I totally believe, and I think it's just the simple fact that foreign exchange is the gateway for investment, for foreign repatriation. And if this is open, does not mean you're going to get them. But if it's closed, it means for sure you're not going to get them. And they're going to find another way, like a parallel market, like going somewhere else. And I believe this was the one decision to float the currency and to make it available that started our, the starting point of the reforms. And if I may add, uh, uh, as you know, in, the, in our new global financial system, it's working the other way around. Countries want weaker currencies. They want to be more competitive. They want more tourists. They want to export more. The, 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 the era of uh, wanting to have a strong currency is, is not there anymore, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And looking ahead now, we've touched on some of the changes, the positive changes that have taken place. But of course, uh, the challenge now is really maintaining sort of the forward growth momentum of the economy into the coming years. What do you see as perhaps the, the, the big obstacles and the, and the key uh, uh, impediments to, to Egypt's growth? I would like to just touch on a different uh, issue is that the reforms on the macro level are intact. This needs to be translated to the micro level and to the companies. And what we're seeing now is that we should increase our focus on direct investment, both on the local private sector, regional, and as well as international. In my opinion, this is going to add uh, uh, to the formula uh, uh, sustainability. This being said, there are also initiatives, and it's understood in, in, uh, uh, in the government of Egypt, a lot of initiatives that uh, are catering for non-catered segments, like the middle market, smaller middle market in Egypt, like to have uh, financial inclusion initiatives, to have cashless society. There are various fronts that are being done in order to maintain and, in fact, do better. This being said, you also have the mega projects, the oil discoveries. And these are all going to kick in very soon. So this is going to be another asset. 
And also, Egypt has in the last two, three years built infrastructure in terms of electricity. We have the biggest, some of, we financed the biggest uh, uh, um, solar energy uh, in the world. It was in Bimban. And there is also, as in the news just la last week, we've had uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, inauguration and opening of three of the biggest electricity in the world. So you have the infrastructure. And you are also, this is accompanied, of course, by roads, by the natural gas, by the human resources. In my opinion, it's a matter of time. Okay, thank you, Hassan. And in the next chapter, we'll be discussing the outlook for Egypt's banking sector. So this is, in my opinion, that the sector will still play an even bigger role than what it's playing now. Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Masterclass series on Egypt's reform agenda in association with Arab African International Bank. I'm James King, the Bankers Africa and Middle East editor, and with me is Hassan Abdullah, Chief Executive of Arab African International Bank. In this next chapter, we will be discussing the outlook for Egypt's banking sector and the push to service the country's SMEs. Uh, Hassan, the banker has just recently published its ranking of the top 1,000 world banks. And in that ranking, we saw really strong gains and movements from Egyptian banks. So we saw improvements to their profitability, to their uh, capital positions, even strong asset growth. Um, looking at Egypt's banking sector today from your vantage point, uh, how would you rate, I guess, the health of the sector as a whole? The banking sector in Egypt has been one of the main sectors that is well regulated and organized and has human resources uh, who are skilled. And mainly that's because the sector, even 100 years ago, was open to competition. It has never been a closed sector where you don't have foreign banks or you don't have exposure to the world. So it's always state of the art. Uh, and we're always competing with the, with the major banks worldwide. So uh, the sector is also, uh, in terms of financial indicators, showing health in terms of capital adequacy, in terms of regulations, uh, complying to regulations, international and local, and in terms of uh, liquidity. And it has proven uh, in several crises, like 2008, the sector has weathered it very smoothly, as well as the incidents of 2011. Uh, so we're quite confident that this, and the sector has more to do as well. Well, this is interesting because Egypt's banks have really played a, a sort of an understated role in, in anchoring the economy through some very challenging times you know, over the last few decades. Do you see the role that Egypt's banks um, are playing now in terms of the reform program, in terms of pushing the economy forward as being equally, equally vital? I honestly believe since we are, in my opinion, uh, one of the most organized and uh, uh, strong sectors, that we should extend our uh, normal work into uh, new uh, venues whereby we can assist in the growth of the country. Of course, that's not our, our initial mandate. However, we have learned to combine them. So when you go to the middle market, you are doing both. When you talk about financial inclusion, you're doing both. When you create a microfinance, you're doing both. So uh, this is, in my opinion, that the sector will still play an even bigger role than what it's playing now. Okay, because obviously uh, an important uh, function of the banking sector's role is to really support SMEs, which is vitally uh, important in Egypt. Um, and I know there are some uh, lending requirements uh, and targets in place for, for SME lending. Um, do you think the banks have or are doing enough right now to support SMEs in Egypt? I believe that the, uh, some of the banks are ahead of others. Some of them are doing enough, others are not. But what's important about this is the mindset and the infrastructure. What I can confidently tell you that most of the banks in Egypt now 
have the infrastructure and the mindset to cater for these uh, uh, segments. Prior to this initiative, this was not even in the mind of at least 50% of the banks. Because so it's, it's been a real change there as a result. It's change, and it's going to pay off. Maybe it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to show, like, hopefully. It started showing, but I think it's going to have an impact, uh, uh, a much bigger impact soon. Okay, and, and coming to AAIB now, I mean, the last few years uh, in particular have been very, very strong for the bank. Um, record profits in some cases, um, the best performing profits in terms of the sector as a whole in certain years. Could you talk me through, I guess, um, the way in which your approach to the Egyptian market has informed uh, those results? We've, we've always been uh, focusing on uh, our human resources which is, I believe, all institutions are doing, as well as having synergies to uh, 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 better serve our clients. Uh, we, we have been specialized and more focused all through the last years to having full solutions and mainly for uh, investments coming into Egypt. We have niched ourselves as uh, the strongest investment banking department in traditional banking and we uh, we we are able to combine the investment banking of course with the corporate finance with the uh, 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 to package deals and to do m and as and we, we at the same time we have been in increasing our exposure through building subsidiaries asset management uh, uh, mortgage finance, leasing, so we can combine a uh, good solution for our customers. Okay. Hassan, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, James. Thank you. The mobile penetration is over 100%. It's over 100 million. And uh, like most people know, how to use the mobile, smart mobile. Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Masterclass series on Egypt's reform agenda in association with Arab African International Bank. I'm James King, the Bankers Africa and Middle East editor, and with me is Hassan Abdallah, Chief Executive of Arab African International Bank. In this next chapter, we will be discussing Egypt's financial inclusion agenda and the role that technology is playing in providing uh, financial services to the unbanked. Uh, Hassan, uh, financial inclusion is obviously top of the agenda for many government departments across Egypt. Uh, the country has a huge population, uh, most of which is, is unbanked. Um, how much progress are you seeing on the financial inclusion front in Egypt today? It's a shame where we are in financial inclusion in terms of penetration and that now for the last several years there have been great and nationwide initiatives starting from National Council of Payment, from use of technology, from uh, having initiatives for the banks to have a percentage of the portfolio for, um, uh, for segments that are unserved, having payroll. Uh, accounts for the all uh, governments and companies. So there has been a lot of effort that's been done. This being said, there is still a long way uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 things to be done, so that we can really, uh, as you mentioned, we are we need we are 100 million. Our penetration is lower than 15 percent, which is. Is, is a, a very, it's, quite, it's quite meager. A long way to go. And, and do, you, do you see that there's a, obviously a very big opportunity and role here for technology and innovation in financial services to, to address this challenge? This is where we're lucky. Technology can take us uh, leaps, especially if you would know the fact that uh, the mobile penetration is over 100%. It's over 100 million. And uh, like most people know, how to use the mobile, smart mobile, internet. We have a, a big in internet penetration as well from the population. And we started introducing one of the things, mobile payments, uh, 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 several gateways. So it's starting to, you know, 
even the, 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 the uh, you know it's all about culture so the culture is changing even now the uh, 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 people uh, from the uh, low income segments are using cards and smart cards to buy this stuff right. so Right. That's quite interesting. The cultural shift there. Yes. And do you think that from the regulatory side of things, there needs to be maybe a bit of catch up to, to meet some of these uh, technological changes sort of, and, and to improve the, the, the way that uh, financial institutions can engage with technology and the unbanked? There are already uh, we have uh, uh, the mobile payment uh, uh, regulations out. Most of the regulations are out. Plus, I believe that the regulator is also part of global in several global initiatives, and they are key, and they are doing a big role, and they are uh, moving as fast as, as is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you mentioned obviously a lot of Egyptian banks are now looking at uh, sort of you know microfinance um, options and, and services. Um, AAIB is no exception. You've just launched uh, uh, your own microfinance unit, Sanda. Um, what role will that play in the Egyptian market? Uh, we had discussion uh, as as staff in Arab Africa about. Uh, uh, serving the microfinance industry and we decided that it is much more uh, uh, prudent to do it as an entity of its own and we have partnered with very uh, respectable renowned partners a fund of sand of KFW and uh, we have uh, established the company and already started working just several weeks ago we have manned it with the best in the market and technology right so we will be one of the fastest providing the service and we're starting not only in Cairo but we're starting outside of Cairo in Sohag which is an area we believe that needs the service and I believe that using technology we can really move very fast and grow very fast in this country I see and as you were saying that ties into what you were saying before about really serving populations outside of the main urban areas and reaching out to those people exactly. to provide them with services. Hassan, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you James, pleasure as always. Mega trends are game changers. So this is going to change the whole uh, face. It might take also a, a very long time, but in my opinion, it's going to change. Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Masterclass series on Egypt's reform agenda in association with Arab African International Bank. I'm James King, the Bankers Africa and Middle East editor, and with me is Hassan Abdullah, Chief Executive of Arab African International Bank. In this final chapter, we will be discussing uh, Egypt's sustainable finance market. Now, Hassan, thank you, James. There are lots of discussions taking place around the world um, regarding uh, the future of sustainable finance. But from an Egyptian perspective, what does the sort of sustainable finance market look like uh, in Egypt today? Well, uh, sustainable, in my opinion. Uh, Egypt is no exception again to the to the world in terms of sustainable finance because it is varying within even the same country in the mentality of the regulator or the institutions. Uh, we at Arab African believe that it, it's it's more now of a buzzword. Like I read it 25 times a day and I hear it 50 times every day. And it's, uh, these buzzwords really sometimes uh, make people think they do understand or they do they uh, where, whereas it is just a shallow word we uh, I we at Arab Africa not only me and there's a big group there who really believe this is going to be a mega trend not a buzzword and mega trends are game changers so this is gonna change the whole uh, face it might take also a, a very long time but in my opinion it's gonna change it is no uh, uh, secret to anybody that the it's still, despite all the CSR work and all the, the uh, that the poor is not getting any richer and they are not having a better quality of life uh, in a lot of countries. Maybe there are exceptions, and therefore there has to be 
a combination between profit and not and the society because without the society you will not be able to work and you will not be able to function. But, but here, I mean, AAIB is a bank which is actually doing something and, and sort of actioning some of some of these these ideas through the the Mosterdam initiative. So so what is that and and, and what is sort of the the implications for for Egypt's uh, sustainable finance market? We we are working on 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 different fronts. Uh, Mosterdam is uh, uh, triggered by Arab African International Bank. Again, not for Arab African, but as an industry movement, we've been able to build capacity to train, and in association with UNDP and Frankfurt and Frankfurt School of Management, and sometimes, so we're, n we're not just looking local, and we're getting even regional uh, 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 apply uh, regional uh, bankers to come and join. So our ambition from most of them is to build capacity and understanding from the younger generation to these uh, uh, concepts and have them believe in it and have them know what to do. So your goal is to create a movement across the industry and, and to let that sort of flourish independently? Ambitiously, yes. Practically, we need everybody's help, including yours and your right. <laughs> institution. Yeah. We have ideas and we are involved in almost all the international uh, uh, initiatives uh, whether they are uh, global compact, equator principles, uh, G20, most of them. And we do our own initiatives and we do have ideas uh, that could, when uh, adopted by several institutions and also regulators, help. We've learned the hard way in Arab Africa. And we started by simple, we started the concept and it's also a group of people who started the simple concept of charity. Then we understood that it's not, it has to be CSR. Then we understood that it had to be sustainable CSR. Then we understood there has to be a combination about looking and focusing on both the economy, the environment, the governance, as well as the whole uh, ecosystem of the, uh, uh, f to have sustainability. Sustainability is not an easy thing, or sustainability is not easy. And I believe that we need to cooperate. Mm -hmm. and, and so would you say then that you're the big challenge or the big uh, sort of, uh, difficulty that you face with this agenda, with the Mosterdam initiative, is it just raising awareness around what you're doing? Is this, is this the, big, the big hurdle? It, we need more awareness and more strong institutions to come along. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, and I've said that several times, the way that we have been taught finance is to focus on return on equity. We have not been really taught how to about sustainable, and this is something that even we think should be done. That there has to be a, 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 a proper education. This being said, because I know that most of the, regardless of what we say, regardless of what we do, it will remain in the mind of the CEO that he wants to increase his return on equity. There are ways that we have thought of that could reflect your uh, social uh, and uh, environmental risk that would affect your return on equity. Whether this in the financial industry, there are several ways where you can do incentives that do not cost anybody through accounting that would allow this to be part an integral system. And this, if this is not done, I'm not talking about Egypt alone, in our, I've discussed this in diff different forums. If this is not done and not taken by regulators, it's not going to work in the medium term. Okay, and, and finally, Hassan, you are a faculty member at the American University in Cairo. Um, you teach finance to, to young students there. Um, do you think some of these I ideas and concepts are, are sort of in the minds of uh, younger generations who are entering finance? Do you see a difference between students today than, say, students from previous years? And what advice would you give to, to young students sort of entering the, the financial uh, field? It's, uh, it's, this is something I pride of. It keeps me young. It keeps me happy. The students are, are really full of life. Of course, you cannot expect them, of course, just to focus my course is non-traditional. Just to make them focus on learning and not the grade takes some effort. But whenever this is done, then 
we can really discuss and, and achieve uh, stuff. I believe that uh, uh, if you want, if, if, I'm, if I'm going to give advice, is simply uh, when you go into real life, you do have to really be determined. You have to take risks. My first lecture to them is our job, not only in finance, but in life, is not to cancel risk, it's to manage risk. And you have to make mistakes. You have to think before you take a decision. But when you think, you have to time. You cannot go into analysis paralysis. This is where most of the uh, young students go, because they keep going into loops. You have to be able to be firm, take a decision. Okay. Hassan, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, James. Thank you.